Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the Premier League show and we're talking about the race for Europe. I'm joined by Will Dalton, Gary Curran and Paul Tierney. And we're going to get straight into it. I suppose the, the key thing to talk about here is Liverpool being champions and how they became champions was down to Chelsea. Look at Gary there, happy. <laughs> there. But down, it was down to Chelsea beating Manchester City. And Will, as a Chelsea fan, how impressed have you been by Chelsea since the restart? Yeah, very impressed. Um, had a little bit of insight into what they were doing, kind of obviously during the lockdown, and had a feeling they were going to hit the ground running. Um, I think with the average age of the side, the youth players involved, it was almost good for them in a way to have a little bit of a break um, and then get plenty of kind of almost pre season work under their belt and they've hit the ground running. And a little stuttery against Villa. But I think the win over Man City was definitely a big confidence boost to show that they can go and beat big sides now as well, even though City were a bit hot and cold on the evening. But overall, impressive. And then again, beating Leicester the weekend in the FA Cup. So I'm sure Frank Lampard will be very happy at the moment. Yeah, as you like to point out on Twitter about his tactics, three from three. But uh, Gary, as a, as a Liverpool fan, um, how, how have you been the last couple of days? I haven't seen or heard from you, so um, you've been celebrating quite hard. Yeah, well, obviously, what you said to Will there, that Chelsea won Liverpool the title, I don't think that's true. I think Liverpool being, whatever, 24 points ahead, they, they had it coming. And uh, it was actually, I was delighted to be watching it with a Chelsea fan. One of, my, one of my mates is a Chelsea fan, and myself and himself are watching it. And it took about an hour to, to sink in. Um, and then after that, there was a couple of drinks had, and it was a good old night. Like, but um, <clears throat> you have to celebrate those. You know, it, it sometimes it only comes around once every thirty years, and I'm hoping it's not going to be something like that again because I wasn't alive the last time they won it when they were wearing this lovely jersey from Ricketts. Um So yeah. hoping that they can kick on now and uh, win another one next season, or at least put it up to City, who will definitely spend big in the summer, and Chelsea, who are looking um, like a team that are doing some some business in the transfer market before it even opens. So there's a couple of teams already planning for next season, and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I was absolutely delighted. I was buzzing. Um, obviously, off the back of the Champions League uh, last year, um, it's been a very good two years winning four titles for Liverpool and only, I think, losing two Premier League games. So it's been a good time to be a Liverpool fan, but I think we're, we were owed a few years of it. I, I spent most of my childhood being slagged by United, Chelsea and Arsenal fans. So uh, I'm happy, happy at the moment. And the weekend was a very good one slagging all those people uh, who has, uh, have been putting me down for a few years. <laughs> Try being an Everton fan if it's not. Yeah. Hurt. But anyway, uh, on to uh, uh, Paul, your your thoughts. And I just want to kind of get your thoughts on how can Liverpool improve their squad for next season now that they've won the league? Do you see them buying loads? Do you see them buying uh, a few? What way do you kind of see that uh, working out, Paul? Uh, well, obviously, congratulations to Liverpool. Well deserved. They're streets ahead of everyone else this season. I think they'll be looking to improve the midfield, maybe, because you look at the midfield. They don't really have a Kevin De Bruyne type player. Like it, it, they don't really need it, but the way they play, but they'd be looking for a player like that. Obviously, Lalana has been injured for a while now as well. He's probably the only one you could really pick out who's a real creative midfielder in there. And Naby Keita hasn't really worked out. So I think they'd be looking to improve in the midfield and then up front as well, just in case one of the lads gets injured. Obviously, they missed out on Timo Werner, but there's other options out there, and I'm sure people will be. be People will be loving to go to Liverpool now. Now that they're champions and won the Champions League last year as well. Yeah, Gary. What? Who do you think? Like in a realistic sense, you know, um, you know, how can Liverpool improve on, on next year? There's a lot of players in the squad that are re- kind of coming towards the thirty uh, years of age mark, and you look at other teams around them that are kind of investing now. Like everyone's going to be trying to catch Liverpool next season. So, do you think that? they'll have to buy someone kind of a few younger players because the thing about Klopp is he doesn't really buy ready-made world-class players he makes world-class players out of players that kind of he brings in if that makes sense well, there's a truth to that in a way because you know at the end of the day he did buy Virgil Van Dijk for 80 million, he did buy Allison for for 80 or for 67 million. You know, Mo Salah was a good player in Serie A. Of course, Mane and and um, the likes of Ox and Naby even, and even what Paul was saying there about Naby. Like Naby is one of those players that it, it hasn't worked out for him only because of the injuries at the moment. But any time he's played, especially in the restart, and you'll know Paul that in the Everton game, the nil nil, he looks like the only Liverpool player that was trying to create something. He had a good game, so I, I still think there's plenty of time for him. I don't think he'll be moving on. I think. Um, so I was very disappointed last time when Liverpool didn't sign anyone, but I think that's kind of like the the fantasy of uh, of signing someone and this this idea that you need to be signing all these players. Liverpool didn't sign anyone that last summer except for Seb Vandenberg for 1.4 million or something. They ended up winning the title, having a very good season. Um, 
So I don't really know. I think it's going to be, I think it should be just squad players. Uh, like Lalana might go, Shaq might go, um, I, maybe Origi could go, someone like that. But for the, the team itself, like even if Liverpool were to get Timo Werner, they'd have to, they'd have to switch it up a little bit. You know, they, they couldn't play, they couldn't play Bobby and Timo the same time. So they would have had to change the tactics to, to kind of fit them in. And obviously as a Liverpool fan at the time, I was, sickened that they didn't get Timo Werner but I'm still happy looking at that squad and I reckon they can even if they're some of them are pushing 30 they can absolutely do a job and there's this idea that players get terrible after they're 30 I think that's that's uh that's not the case at all especially you know with in the modern day when players can last up to 33 34 have we seen the likes of Ronaldo Messi and I know I'm not comparing Liverpool players or any players to to those because they're obviously different animals they're freaks but even the likes of James Miller who's 34 now and like he's running around like he's 22. So there is players there that, that can fit the bill and fit the system. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be the age of 20 or they have to be this like this prospect or anything like that. But I do think that, that Klopp might get a couple of squad players. But even if he doesn't, I wouldn't be too angry as a Liverpool fan because you have the likes of Curtis Jones there. You have the likes of Harvey Elliott there. You have the likes of Hoover there. You have the likes of um, Nico Williams there as well that can fill in and do a job. So I don't know that there's not anyone really out there as a Liverpool fan for me that I'm like, Oh my God, we need this person. We have to, we have to strengthen here. We have to do this, whatever. Like maybe like a, a backup left back because, you know, James Miller has been filling in there um, every now and then when Robbo's injured. So there's not, it's not really a case of, um, it's not really a case of who should we sign. It's a case of really like kind of banding them together a little bit more often, a couple of players some big contracts and seeing where they can go from there. And look, if they don't win it then next year, then maybe look at changing it up. But I think, I think the squad is very strong at the moment and they'd be hard beat anyway. Um, whoever strengthens. Yeah, the only thing I'd be worried about if I was a Liverpool fan is that if any of those players out of the starting eleven gets injured, then Liverpool do not look the same animal as they have been. They've been blessed now a lot of the season without injuries, I feel. And City, on the other hand, have had injuries to bigger players like Laporte. Like, if something happened to Van Dijk or Mane or Salah, I think Liverpool could have a disastrous season. But then again, you look at someone like Minamino who came in in January, could go on next season to have a really good season and kind of fill in there. I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. Like there, there is that 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 case of you know, if a big player gets injured, then your your season's going to be derailed. But that's like you said, that that's the same for every team, and you can't just buy these eighty million players to fill in for when another player gets injured. And I think obviously Lovren is a, is a weak point in that team, and, and maybe he could be strengthened on. But like obviously, and, and Joel Matip's just get after getting an injury, and um, so maybe a. a centre back but not one to to go ahead of Gomez or, or Van Dyke at the moment and you're not going to splash 80 million on a player or even over 50 million on a player that's going to be third choice centre back so it's very difficult to to kind of get the balance right you know there's there's players out there that want to play for Liverpool and that Liverpool could sign but are they right for the team and are they willing to you know be a bit part player I think that buying Shakiri for 12 million was a nice bit of business even though he's only played whatever three or four league games a season or started three or four league, league games a season he's a good bit of business a good squad player to have just in case you know, Mane or Salah get injured. Now we've been blessed because we haven't had those major injuries. But, you know, when they have been injuries, it's just been maybe one week, two week, two and a half weeks kind of thing. So they can kind of deal with that. So I feel it's one of those things where they'll have to look into it. And at the moment, I think all they need is, is squad players. I know, I know, like it, it could get stagnated, and people say you always have to be building on things. But like, it's very hard to see who goes out of that team directly for another player that you can buy in. You know, and it might not work. So. And I think the squad at the moment is very, very, very strong. So, And they just won a league title, and that, that's proof in the pudding there. So we'll see what happens this summer. But I actually don't expect Liverpool to sign anyone big at all, over £25 million. Okay, well, Just picking up on that point there, uh, nice bit of business, Timo Werner, £50 million. <laughs> I was. As a Liverpool fan, I was absolutely oh, sick to see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, well, it's a shrewd bit of business as well. With, with Hakem Ziyech and Timo Werner and now talk of Havertz, it's great, Like, but that back line and that keeper needs to be sorted ASAP as well. You know, They should be looking at a centre-back and a, and a, and a left-back and even yeah. spending £60 million on Ben Chilwell. That's that's too much for for Ben Chilwell. There's better there's better out there, I think. It, it is, but it's, it's the market in the UK. If you want an English player of that standard, yeah. that's what you're going to pay. Um, and I think as well, when it comes to, you know, you have to you have to consider as well now for the Champions League for the European places is the um, the homegrown players. And Ben obviously fits that category, so that kind of loosens it up elsewhere. But yeah, no, again, absolutely superb bit of business. Um, and a, lot, a few things that have kind of gone under the radar is the business that have gone the other way because we sold Morata now. He's gone for a handsome fee to to Atletico Madrid. Just didn't quite work out for him. I actually quite liked Alvaro. I thought he was really good, but just maybe didn't see the Premier League. 
Uh, and over the past two or three years, the money we've made from players that we've sold have, have actually been quite good. Then obviously bring into the fact that we couldn't buy players in the past 18 months. The money's kind of been just sitting there. But Timo Werner, I think, is he's worth twice that in, in today's market. Um, hopefully he doesn't, you know, he, he takes to the to the Premier League and I'm sure he will, but um a sensational deal for fifty million in this day and age. Yeah, well, I think um, you know, just kind of sticking with the Premier League table and kind of going down from first, second now, Manchester City. I mean, they've been they've been wiping away teams and then Chelsea came along with Pulisic and you know, he really he really scared them. And obviously I thought Frank Lampard uh, got things spot on and then they got Fernandinho sent off so there was lots of things that worked out for Chelsea's favour but Ch- Chelsea were really pushing for the win and you could see from Manchester City's point of view where their weak line is and it's that centre back position uh, they've been playing Fernandinho there most of the season as a makeshift centre back they'll be looking to obviously add another centre back in there with Laporte because I don't think they rate John Stones or Otamendi um, to play in there alongside Laporte if they can keep Laporte fit he's obviously a massive player I think they're, that's their answer to Vincent Company for the future that's what they want him to be but from Manchester City point of view obviously Pep's going to be you know doing everything he can to get as many players as he can in to try and push Liverpool for the title next season now he'll be raging that they felt so far behind um, what kind of way do you see the transfer market under under City going. Are, are they allowed to buy players now? Because I know they're under well, investigation. Paul, it's it's very interesting because I just get a sense of with Manchester City a little bit of staleness creeping in. I got a sense when they're playing, and I saw them against Chelsea the other night, and you can kind of understand it in a way. It's very hard, I suppose, to motivate players when you're in their position because they don't really have anything to play for at all. Um, they were never going to catch Liverpool. They're not going to be caught themselves by third place. They're kind of looking ahead to the Champions League and that has been a massive big monkey they can't get off their back when it comes to playing in Europe. They just don't seem to perform at the same level. Um, but now they have a great opportunity if they can keep the squad fit uh, um, and kind of just ready to go in that kind of mini tournament that will happen for the Champions League. It could be a really good chance for them to, to take that trophy home. But I don't know, uh, with Pep, is he coming towards the end of his term in Manchester? There's been talk about Barcelona possibly being interested in bringing him back. He's had a long break away from home, managed in various places. Possibly could be a bit, uh, 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 you know, uh, a nice fit. Also going back to a Barcelona side that has not been on the same level as the one he left it on. He might find that that's a new chance he'd like to uh, going home, I don't know, City, obviously, with the ban from Europe, which, as it stands now, is they're not playing in the Champions League next season, I think, if I'm right. Um, that has to be decided by the Court, court of Arbitration for Sport. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do. Um, and, yeah, they do need strengthening. I think a few of those players will be moved on. Um, I think it just sometimes they can play great football, like you said, at the back, they're a little bit weak. They haven't replaced company. For me, they don't have an out-and-out leader, which I think they're missing. Um, I can't see Laporte replacing company in that mould, from what I know about him. Uh, he's a very different character. Um, and, yeah, they, they, they've they struggled with with filling that centre-back position down through the years. Spent big money on John Stelz, spent big money on Otamendi, um, the other player whose name escapes me from Valencia they signed as well. It was a centre-back. Mangala, you went to Everton. Uh, Mangala, yeah. I, it just just has not worked out for them. They've, they've never had a really, really strong centre-back pairing that's worked out. Even when they won the title last season and were superb, you just always felt that at that back that was the little bit that, that was weak. So it'd be very interesting to see. And just what you're mentioning overall on the transfers, what I've heard is that a lot of clubs aren't going to be spending big this summer. Um, a lot of the owners are very nervous when it comes to their own money about what's going to happen with the fallout from the pandemic. So a lot of teams are just going to go, right, we're going to go with what we have and we're going to stick with what we have. Um, and that's why Liverpool didn't go for Werner. Um, even a 50 million, which you kind of think just just seems just seems sensible. That's what you would do. You know, you'd pay 70, 80. You know, if we're talking about 60 million for Ben Chilwell and Timo Werner goes for 50. Mm. 
and and a club like Liverpool who've just won the league and the Champions League, so there's plenty of money or should be plenty of money in the pot there. Why haven't they gone for him? So maybe that will be a theme across Europe this summer with clubs just being a little bit wary because again we could be hit by a second wave. Everything gets locked down again. They might be just thinking, right, let's let's just you know hold fire for now, and then the plus side of that, if nothing happens next summer, you can go big again. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, Paul, uh, your thoughts on City? How can they improve? For next season uh, in your opinion well i think obviously as you have mentioned center back is a massive position they need to fill in koulibaly looks like he's going to be available from napoli he's been linked with liverpool he's pretty much linked with everyone in europe all the time every big team in europe and uh, they'll have to buy at the back i think the left both left backs they have zinchenko and mendy aren't good enough either they're both great going forward, but when it comes to actually doing the defensive job, they're not there in comparison to Robertson at Liverpool, who's fantastic, solid as a rock. Um, David Silva is going to be leaving as well. Is Foden going to step into his position? Maybe they'll look to buy as well, buy again in that position. I think obviously the pandemic is going to affect it, but I still think City have the money there and they're going to spend money regardless because they're so far off Liverpool, they kind of have to spend money now. Yeah, no, and, and and that's something that um, you know people are kind of wondering: Will they be allowed to spend the money, Gary? What are your thoughts on it? I think for next season, I think for next season, I think City are on they're on the cusp of a rebuild, really, and that's all been spearheaded by uh, Foden. And you've seen Foden come into his own in the last you know couple of months in the Premier League; he's been absolutely fantastic. Um, but you know, Aguero's in the last year of his contract, and will he leave? And there's David Silva as well there. And even if Aguero stays, like he's a very injury prone, prone player, these get, getting into his 30s now as well. They do, of course, need that centre back you were saying. The left back, Zinchenko's not even a left back. The man's a centre midfielder, and he's <laughs> he kind of just playing left back for them. And he, he does a job in fairness, but he's not a left back. He's not there. Mendy's headless, but Pep has never trusted Mendy. Um, so they're, they're the cusp of rebuilding and they will have to spend money but where does it go especially when what Will was saying like there's there's there's, uh, there's players out there but the money is, is difficult and I think there are a couple of um, teams that are trying to save for that rainy day effort at the moment just in case there is a phase two or whatever so it'll be interesting to see but I actually do feel that they will spend any money this summer because they, they were embarrassed by their standards this year to be so far behind first place that they kind of have to they kind of have to do it and I, I do feel if they do get banned from Europe um, if the ban does come true, we'll find out in August what the sus with that is. Um, I think it'll be very difficult for them to bring the big players in. But like as we saw with Chelsea, that 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 transfer ban that they had that helped them so much. That Frank, it was it's it just stabilized the club for a couple of months, and they were able to to give some players a really good go. And like the likes of Billy Gilmore might not have got a game had uh, had Chelsea bought in another centre midfielder, or the likes of Tammy Abraham might not have got so many minutes on the pitch or so many goals had they bought in a team of Werner last summer. It just, it just stabilised the club. And I think City, if they do get the ban, it actually might just stabilise them, give someone like Foden that 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 number 10 role that he wants and, and that he deserves because Silva's going. But it'll be interesting to see. It all really depends on the whole FFP thing and if they do get banned or if it's pushed back a year or stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see. But I do think they'll spend money regardless. It just depends which players are available and who that can they sign with the FFP thing going on as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I kind of moving on then to, to Chelsea, as, as you spoke about there, the fact that, you know, Lampard's not really been allowed to bring in the players he's wanted till now. And the job that he's done to date, like no one really expected Chelsea to finish in the top four or, or be in the top four places for around now going to the end of the season. They look nailed on now to probably finish third, in my opinion. Um, Will, from your point of view, did, did you... I know you were excited about Lampard coming in, but did you expect him to have the impact he's had so far? And are you excited to see what actual players he'll be able to bring in now to work with the already impressive job he's done with the younger players that he's had at his disposal already? Yeah, well, look, I think overall it was a slight risk. But I think when we go back to last summer when, you know, the Chelsea, uh, the, the board or, or, and Roman or wherever were looking to to make the decision about who they were going to bring in. It was very hard to bring in any other manager. I'm not saying apart from Frank, because obviously you had this transfer ban. So how are you going to attract a really elite manager, which is what they've always gone for, um, if you've got a transfer ban? So then it was kind of like, well, if we bring in Frank, he's going to get the best out of the youth system. He has Jody Morris behind him, who obviously essentially was – the not running the academy but was the um the reserve coach and the youth team coach 
for so long uh, and knew the players inside out. So that was almost a plus point. And then they were, I suppose, hoping that his management skills would grow. The, it was always kind of well known that Frank would have the potential to be a good manager. So I think everybody was a bit excited with that. They've managed to really, I suppose, kind of hit the ground running at a good preseason. Um, yes, they weren't allowed to sign players, but they made the most of them. They, I think they they gave encouragement and motivation to the youth players. Look, here is your chance now. There's no more excuses. Get in and show that you should be in this Chelsea side. And a few of them have taken that chance. When it goes ahead now to transfers, I think the thing that Frank will have is that he's a almost like a current player. So he knows the kind of modern day football or what they're like. Um, from what I've been reading about Timo Werner, Timo was very impressed with what Frank had to say to him. So I suppose Frank is kind of, you know, Frank's a clever guy and he knew how to get deals across the line. He knows what to say to players if he really wants a player to make them sign. And I suppose that will be an attraction as well to players uh, in other markets. It's a new youthful team. There's kind of almost a new class, a new era beginning at the club. Hmm, I might want to be part of that. And I've also, you live in London, um, and all the attractions that brings as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, who else Frank brings in. I think there'll be another one or two signings, and then I think they'll go with what they have because I think there's a good um, there's a good basis there. There's a good foundation for a team for next season. Yeah, Paul, what are your thoughts on uh, what the job Frank Lampard's done so far this season? I think he's done an excellent job, to be honest. Obviously, they've achieved more than I thought they would at the start of the season. It was kind of a free hit for him, if you look at it, when he was uh, brought in. Uh, no one expected much. He had Mount and Tamari at Derby with him last year as well. They done very well there, and now they're showing it in the top in the top league in the world. So he's done a fantastic job. They had a bit of a blip, at, uh, started a bit slowly, then a blip in the middle, but now they look stronger, and they're just going to attract more players, even after beating City there on Thursday, and the start they've had in this, getting to the Cup semi-final as well, is massive for them. Yeah, Gary, your thoughts? Um, yeah, well, highs and lows. Um, obviously, it, it, like Paul said, it was a free hit, and Frank has been very impressive, and credit to Chelsea, they brought him in, he was the perfect man for the job, and everyone they got in there, they really believed in it. And uh, they've done really well. And I, don't, I didn't expect Chelsea to be, you know, going for third place at the start of the season, but it's been very, very good. It'll be interesting to see how he handles this summer and next year as well, because it's all fun and games. You know, getting Timo Werner for 50 million was an absolute bar- it was a bargain deal. He's twice that. Pl- he's twice. He's worth twice that. Hakim Ziyech is a fantastic player as well, can play in the wing, can play in the 10. The talk of Kai Havertz, but they do need a new backline. They've conceded 41 goals, and that's enough goals to put you down in the middle of the table. They're just lucky that they have... Um, players there like Jorginho who's stepped into a kind of a role where he's able to pass the ball forward a little bit more he wasn't like that under Sarri so there's been a lot of more creativity there as well this this season and Mount has stepped into his own and Tammy's been scoring a few goals as well and um, they have the players that were scoring goals from so that's why they're in that third place but they really do need to look at their point they they, they, they need a centre back they can do with someone at right back because Aspie's getting old and they need to keep and I know it's going to be tough because it cost 80 million, most expensive goalie in the world. They only got him two seasons ago. And like, they're not going to buy a new keeper this summer, but they really do. Like, he's not up to it. He's not, he's not the standard. He's not a league winning standard keeper. And if they want to push on, they do need that back line. I remember being, being a Liverpool, I was obviously a Liverpool supporter three years ago as well. Three years ago when, um, when Salah came in and we had, we hadn't got Van Dyke. We still had Coutinho. We had Salah. We had Firmino. It was great watching them. But I remember the first day of the season, they drew three all at Watford. And I was like, that was a good result. But I was like, hold on a second. Like, you can't go anywhere if you're drawing three all away at Watford because, you know, just because Salah and Firmino and Mane scored on the day, it was great, it was amazing. But, like, the backline was so poor, and I think Chelsea do need one or two players in there to, to really help it out, and a goalie as well, um, to really push on and kick on. It'd be really interesting to see um, who Frank can sign in there as well because there's not many available. Like, it, there's loads of talk of Kula Valley, and there's loads of talk of, like, uh, Thiago Silva, who's on a free as well. And obviously, he's a bit old, but even if you're just filling the void for, uh, for a season or two, it's not the worst thing in the world because I do feel that they need to they need to strengthen the back line of the keeper before they do anything else. Yeah, Will, as a, as a Chelsea fan, would you agree with what the lads have said there? What, what kind of way? Yeah. Before we move. Yeah, on I think I think they've got I think they've got the um, the side playing a very kind of fluid, free flowing side of football, and they're quite expressive. Um, I think the back line does worry me slightly. I think Rudiger is definitely a very good centre back, and my preferred pairing or pairing is him and Christensen. But I think they do need another one to kind of. I think Tamori still has a little bit to learn, but he's very, very good at times. Reese James, I think, will will be the natural successor to Cesar Spilicueta. Goalkeeper wise, Kepa, I do like Kepa. I think he lost his confidence a bit. 
Um, I think there's a lot more to come from him, but whether he will be given that time at Chelsea to kind of, um, uh, you know, s fulfill his potential, we'll see. I think what will what it will come down to is the market in Spain. If clubs show interest in Kepa, and Kepa is maybe willing for a move, it might suit all parties. It depends. Um, the Ajax keeper uh, Onan has been linked with a move, um, and I I read reports that apparently the Ajax. I have said he's actually agreed to move somewhere. Um, so we'll kind of have to wait and see. But, yeah, they, they, they certainly do need to sign up with the back. And it was a good comparison, actually, with Liverpool a few years ago. Um, I think the team is immature as well. They're young. They need to become a bit more savvy. But they have players like Kante there on the defensive side of things who's keeping things ticking over. I've said it before. He's the best player I've ever seen live, Kante. He's incredible to watch live as a footballer. Um so that's going to help. And I think that, yeah, I think, again, just going forward, I think they will improve as they mature. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how they do work on the defensive side of the game because that's maybe the one last thing they're lacking in. Yeah, well, lads, I'm going to move straight on to uh, the rest of the teams in, in the uh, race for Europe, basically, because it's kind of a race after that. I mean, the top three there, are, I'm, I'm putting Chelsea ahead of Leicester because I think that they will finish ahead of Leicester. Leicester have been struggling late. Wolves have been dominating late. Uh, Manchester United have kind of been here and there. And then Sheffield United, unfortunately, have just dropped. Um, they've been unlucky in games. They were unlucky against Villa. They should have had a win in that game. Obviously, the ball gone over the line, which was really unfortunate. And us, as Ireland fans as well, obviously want to see the Sheffield United boys doing well. But unfortunately... They, they struggled, they got beat by Newcastle. So they're kind of fell down the pe pecking order and then they've been replaced in seventh there by Spurs and Burnley have overtaken them as well. But they have a, a game in hand on Burnley so they can get back up to the kind of top eight there basically. But just kind of your thoughts on Leicester, Wolves and Manchester United will uh, as kind of the, the last few games come in. How do you see... Or who do you see becoming the strongest of the three there? Because I see Leicester just dropping. Yeah, they again, a, a bit like not probably as bad as Sheffield United, but certainly um, they've not really hit the ground running. I think of all things, watching the Watford game last weekend and, you know, the, they, Ben Chilwell's goal was as superb as it was conceding the, the equaliser minutes later just was the worst possible thing that could have happened to them. Um, and it seems their confidence has just been destroyed a little bit. And I think some teams have found it really hard just to come back um, and, and just get going, I think. I think overall, I'm sure the lads might agree, the football has just looked a little bit off pace, which is understandable, I suppose. Um, but I definitely see Chelsea now catching them. I think they have the momentum and the belief because third place again will be an extra bit higher. Frank will be pushing the players for that. Leicester just seem like they just look a little bit tired, look a little bit out of ideas. Um, same with Sheffield United. Sheffield United just look uh, look like a beaten team. United and Wolves have been impressive. Um, Wolves especially. Um, it just seemed to be going from strength to strength with them. Um, it'll be interesting to see with their running. They essentially have quite good games coming up winnable games um sorry to say this paul but arsenal at home um next yeah you would fancy wolves in that they then go away to sheffield united um you could see them getting three points there paul they've got everton at home sorry but you could again if they're really gunning for it then it's burnley palace and chelsea on the final day so sorry, you have to, to kind of say for wolves the last day huh yeah. Right, well, look, <laughs> it's 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 who knows. Both teams could be there by then, but they look yeah. like they have a nice run and in the form they're in. They're scoring goals. They look good at the back. The midfield is looking strong. Traore looks like, you know, I can see a big club coming in for him very soon. And I'm talking Real Madrid, Barcelona. He's that type of player, as in they'd be very interested in seeing power, pace. The one pro problem with him a couple of years ago was he just could not put the final end product together. He now seems to have gotten over the line. That's good management, good coaching. Um, so, yeah, I think it could be three and four for them. I think United might just miss out. They look good as well, but a little bit more hit and miss. If you watch them the weekend, it was like watching paint dry. Um, but they have... 
Yeah, they have the game winners like Pogba and Fernandes who can bring that extra bit of spark if they want to, especially with Pogba. It's all about if 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 they're on if they're on form on that day. But I think yeah, I think it could be three, four, and five there. Okay, and if you're kind of putting them into positions um, after Chelsea in third, who would you kind of be going uh, fourth, fifth, sixth? Uh, right now, I think I'd go Wolves. Yeah, yeah, right now, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I think then it'll be United closely followed by Tottenham. Uh, or sorry, well, no, we, we'd have Leicester in there somewhere. So uh, what's the points difference there? Pfft. Leicester might finish around sixth, maybe. Um, in and around there. I'd say they'll be kind of maybe fighting with United um, and, and Tottenham. There's, there's, three, so, there's three points between... Um, Wolves and Leicester but Leicester have a game in hand which is against Everton tomorrow I think Everton mm. will win that game personally but anyway um, Ma- uh, Manchester United are f- have 49 points and mm. they've played 31 like Leicester so that's- well, to be honest with you Paul that's a big game for Leicester because you could see that the sort of game if they were to win it could give them a bit of momentum could give them a bit of belief that right we can go again if they're to lose it could go the other way and it could be just a right off the season. They've done very well again, Leicester. You know, we have to remember they're a very small club in comparison to the other teams up there. Um, so it's been a successful one for them. I think they'll need a few more signings. It'll be interesting to see if they splash a bit of cash in the summer. Yeah, well, Gabby, I'll just get your thoughts kinda on on kind of how you think those teams have have come since the restart. You know, you've you've got Leicester, Manchester United Wolves. And Sheffield, I'm not really putting Spurs in there because I don't, I don't really see Spurs finishing so strongly. Like, um, they could well creep into that sixth spot, but they're four points off United as well. So I just think they're a bit further back, and the teams that are ahead of them, I don't see United falling by too many points or any of the other teams. So what kind of way? Uh, are, have you been impressed by anyone, and have you not been impressed by? I've been very impressed with Wolves. I think everyone has been impressed with Wolves. They're kind of playing a game like. Um like American football through plays and everything like that, bringing Traore on at 60 minutes with uh, left backs and right backs absolutely beat and he's doing a job and they've been getting a buy, but they have got a little bit of luck as well. Like there's a couple of times in games where they've, uh, they could have uh, conceded or they could have scored more where they, or where they, where they haven't been scoring more. So I actually don't think there's going to be two, like Leicester obviously have been disappointing as well, but I actually don't think they'll drop out of the, of the top four. I think the only switch in the top four will be Chelsea into third and Leicester into fourth. And then maybe the only switch in five, six and seven might be United in fifth, uh, Wolves in sixth. And in seven, I actually, I, I have a, a bit of love for Burnley here because they're a very hard team to beat. And obviously, Bar City smashing them 5-0. They're actually a very hard team to beat. And them beating Palace last night 1-0 was a big game as well because Palace don't concede many goals, especially in Selhurst Park. Um, that was a big game for them. And they could absolutely creep up because they've done that in the past. They've, they've got that European spot before. But obviously, it's it's all against them now. And they're a couple of points behind, but it's, it's so doable. And it's very hard to call um, at the moment because I don't think anyone would have suggested that Leicester would have been in such poor form. No one would have suggested that Sheffield United would drop like they have. And no one would have suggested Wolves have crept up so much. It's a very hard to call, but at the moment, I think um, the only changes that I would make to the league table significant ones would be Chelsea getting the third spot, and United getting the fifth, and uh, Wolves dropping into sixth place. And between Tottenham, Burnley, Sheffield United for that seventh spot. Unfortunately, Paul, once again, I don't think there's any Arsenal involved in a European spot this season. But look, a rebuild on the cards. But yeah, I, I just feel that Leicester just have it. And like uh, Will said, that they can go on a run of form. Like beating Everton tomorrow is nearly a dead cert, I think. And uh, once they do that, maybe they can uh, maybe they can get a bit of a run of form and, and, and kick on because they have the players to do it as well. Madison and Bardi and, and Tielemans and, and Didi. Like once they start um, once they start playing football because that's that's they haven't really been doing that. They've been really really poor and they conceded in sloppy goals that they never did before. So I do feel that it is going to be one of those things that it changes, but not too much. I do feel that Chelsea th- third place though is a very good season for them. I might come back to you on that dead sir tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Paul. Your, your your kind of thoughts then, uh, lastly, just before we finish up. Yeah, well, obviously on Leicester, I think all of this for them, even though there was a bit of a break as well, has stemmed from three defeats over December and January, losing the cup semi-final to Villa and getting hammered by City and Liverpool two games in a row in December when people were kind of still including them in the league race, even though they were never really going to be in it. Um, I don't. I think Leicester will slip out now because they're just they're not playing like they they were. Uh, Vardy's not scoring at the minute obviously there's only been two games back for them and a cup game as well but they don't seem to be getting the ball into him at all it's not really working for them 
Wolves are a fantastic side, and I fear for Kieran Tierney on Saturday against Adama Traore. It once he starts running that, it might just like the difference in size, the difference in speed. I mean, it could be a rough day for Arsenal. Uh, Wolves have been fantastic. They look solid as a rock as well. They haven't conceded a goal yet. Uh, their midfield is fantastic, as we always say. Experience right through the team, and Real Jimenez is still banging them in. Um, United, as you said as well, hit and miss. Martial is a very hit and miss player. He can score a hat trick one week, he'll miss a sitter the next week. Pogba, when he wants to play, he'll play. Bruno Fernandes is the main man. It's all coming through him at the minute. Whether he can keep it going, if he gets a knock, he might be out for a while. Who knows? But for me, it would be Chelsea third, United fourth, and Wolves just missing out in fifth. But they do have the Europa League come August as well. So that's another one they have to look forward to. Okay, well, I think we'll 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 leave it at that then for our race for the top four. Obviously, we'll be doing more videos kind of as the as the race heats up even more over the next couple of weeks. But I think it it will be interesting to see the running because I I know Man United and Wolves have a fairly handy run in for themselves. I'm not too sure about Leicester, but let's see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Kind of get straight into it. Norwich have not been great, but I think it's been fairly expected. I think most people have been expecting them to be going down anyway. They've had... I mean, the only real result that's kind of been decent for them lately is that one-all draw against... My, or, sorry, I'd say one-all draw. We went to, obviously, extra time. They got beaten. Um, but they showed a lot of character against Manchester United. They got beat by, by Everton, and then they got beat as well before that. Um, well, what are your thoughts on Norwich? Um, do you think it's a case where they need to go down, rebuild, come back up type of thing? Yeah, completely. And I think they will. I think... Uh, they haven't got a bad manager, haven't got a bad setup. Try to play some nice football this year. You can see what they're trying to do. Just don't have enough players, don't have enough top draw players, I think, to implement the plan um, the FARC wants to have, the, the, the football he wants to play. Some could say that's a bit naive. They should have changed their style, been more defensive, etc. But maybe, you know, sometimes when teams come up as well, they have a plan, right? We're going to go up, we're going to just. You know, not spend a huge amount of money, go back down, continue to build, and then maybe come up again and have a real go. Norwich have been there, thereabouts for a good few years. They've been a bit of a, a yo yo team. But I think, you know, up front, I think Timu Puki has, was found out a little bit towards the end of the season, hasn't scored, I think, since December or January, I want to say. Um, and Adam Ida is there, and he is primed and ready to go. I think um, he'd be possibly. You know, Pookie may stay, but I think Ida has the future for them. They seem to have a fairly good youth set up as well. So I think they'll come down and come back a bit stronger, but they're gone at this stage. Uh, Gary, what are your thoughts on Norwich? Yeah, I mean, we can kind of gloss over Norwich. I think everyone knew, even um, before the restart, that um, Norwich were going to go down regardless. They just haven't They haven't performed. They had a couple of here and there games where they played some good football. And, you know, in fairness to them, they stuck to it. And like Will said, they have a good manager and they have some good players. They have Buendia. They have two very good fullbacks. Um, Puki, I suppose, he is that championship striker. He'll get a couple of goals in the championship. And um, Todd Cantwell as well. So it'll be interesting to see how they do in the transfer market as well. They'll have to sell a couple of players. And those there's a couple of players there that absolutely could stay in the bottom half of the league or maybe some mid-table teams um, in the Premier League. So, But look, they're down. They, they haven't performed well and they deserve to go down and it's just uh, who are they dragging down with them at this at this stage now yeah Paul just la last day on Norwich yeah obviously it's been a tough tough season for them they started very well Pookie was getting the goals and obviously they got that win over City which everyone remembers probably the win of the season for most teams um, it's it's I, I don't even think they expected to come up last season as well I heard something the other day on Sky that they didn't expect to come up and they weren't really hopeful of staying because like they're, they're very short on numbers as well as you mentioned uh, i think the main thing for them when they do go down is if they hold on to players like cantwell max Ahrens, and tim crew because i think pookie might stay on because he's a bit further on his career on in his career in comparison to Ahrens and cantwell so it's it's mainly up to that and can they get back up again next year yeah well i think i think that's uh the case with them. i think if they well, they are inevitably going to be going down, but I think, as Will said, they have Adam Ida, who's who we all have high hopes for. I'm sure the club has all has high hopes for, and he looks like he's just he's just kind of waiting for that run of games. He's obviously third in the pecking order behind um, Pookie and and Dermich, and I think he's next in line. So if one of them goes or two of them, he'll be the main man. And I think you, you know I I 
think back to when Shane Long played with Reading in the championship and, and took it by storm. Um, I think Ida could have that type of season next season. He has the perfect physique, perfect frame, uh, scores goals. You know, he actually kind of, in, in, in many ways, as a player, reminds me of Lukaku, obviously with a better touch. But he remi- just because he, he, he's big, tall, uh, runs at people, has surpri- like he's surprisingly quick, has really, really good feet as well. And I think next season, if he's, uh, you know, the shackles are off with him, I think he could have a really big season for Norwich. And I think he could be the one that fires them back to the Premier League. But again, if they sell players like Aaron's, Cantwell and Cashin, as well as the parachute payments that they have, they're in a really good position to rebuild and bring in players that maybe they could look to, you know, help them get back up as soon as possible. Yeah, I think keeping Wendy is a big one. Wendy is is uh, is their best player. I, I had the, the privilege of seeing him play against Villa, um, Norwich and Villa, um, in just at the in the new year. And he's a fantastic footballer. He doesn't get a lot. He gets a lot of credit from the Norwich fans, but he doesn't get a lot of credit around the league. And he's a brilliant player. And I think if if he goes, they can make the most money off him, and he could go to a team up in the up in the mid table or higher higher half of the of the league, like a Burnley or an Arsenal, you know, so or even an yeah. Everton. And he'd do a job, and he'd do a job for them. So um, it'd be interesting to see what happens with him. And they're going to make some money off him, and I think he will go because he is he is good. But like the other ones you were saying, lads, that you know they could stay, they could leave. And I think uh, Adam Ida is, is a perfect example of um, of a player who's ready to go, who's ready to go, and could absolutely fire them back into the Premier League if he kicks on next season as well. Yeah, what well, kind of onto Villa then? Because they're obviously next. In the, in the table, and they have not come back well at all. Pretty sure they've lost every game since. Or they, no, they drew one game, sorry, against uh, Newcastle, but they've lost against Wolves and they've lost against Chelsea. Uh, they took the lead against um, against Chelsea, and then Chelsea went on to win that game. But will you would have watched Villa obviously with with that Chelsea game? Have you been impressed by them? Or you know, at this point, I think lots of people think Villa are just. You know, dead and buried because they just don't score goals. That, that, you take the words out of my mouth. That's why they're gone. They ain't they ain't scoring goals. Um, they're lacking ideas. Grealish is there trying to kind of pull them along in a way. Um, and he's a very intelligent, creative footballer. But I think they're lacking a little bit of leadership on the pitch. Um, they just they just haven't they've had a good few injuries this year but they just haven't been able to find consistent goals in the team and then the back has been kind of leaking them and when that can t- that when that happens and it kind of goes into a bit of a snowball effect a bit like Sheffield United they just don't seem to be able to kind of stop themselves uh, and get get out of this run at the worst possible time and then when you look at their fixtures list Liverpool away I'm sure Liverpool might still be having a glass of champagne on the day, but I'm sure they'll still comfortably beat them. Man United at home, Palace, a team who don't concede goals at home, Everton, Arsenal and and West Ham who are struggling for their lives. That's not an easy fixture list. You can't see Villa picking up a huge amount of points with the form they're in right now. Um, There's already been whispers about Dean Smith and uh, his managerial future at the club. And when you start to hear those sort of things, you almost get the feeling like they're resigned to the phase of going down. Yeah, Paul, what, what would be your thoughts on it? Yeah, they look very poor. Uh, it's all gone through Grealish. All the players seem to be looking for Grealish when they're playing as well, where they all don't seem to be very confident, bar himself. They've actually had probably the toughest starts coming back. They've played Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, and it's been very tough. Them. They've looked extremely tired towards the end of games, particularly against Wolves on Saturday, where they just couldn't muster anything, and Sheffield United in the first game as well. Uh, it doesn't look good for them, but who knows? There's some very poor teams down there as well. And Gary, lastly, on Villa. Yeah, I have a, sp- a soft spot for Villa, and I'd love to see them stay up, but I just can't see it. They're not scoring goals. They're a one-trick pony. Give the ball to Jack Grealish. If he gets fouled, we get a set piece, then we don't know what to do with it. If someone scores, um, they're nearly surprised. They're nearly surprised when they score a goal more than um, they celebrate the thing, and they know they're going to concede at some stage. So it's one of those things where they... they Fulham last year, same thing. They they splashed over hundred million. They just bought the wrong players. They they bought the wrong type of person, and uh, they're gonna go down. It's simple as because I can't see them picking up another. Well, they have twenty seven points. I can't see them picking up even another six out of those games. It'd be very difficult for them. I hope they do stay up. I hope there's some sort of a miracle where everyone else around them just starts losing and they'll pick up a draw and a win somewhere. And um, but at the moment, it's 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 not good, and I do feel they'll go down and. 
Um, it'll be sad to see them go because I, I think Villa are one of the traditional Premier League clubs and just haven't looked like one in the last couple of years, even when they're in the league um, five, six years ago when they went down in, in the year before that, they looked like they were hanging on, struggling. They just haven't deserved their spot in the Premier League this season and they'll go down. Yeah, you kind of almost feel sorry, for them, as you said. Uh, actually, before Villa went down, I think they were the uh, longest serving club in the top flight before Everton. You now, Everton, obviously, Everton are now, but uh, there's a little fact for you. But just, I don't yeah. want to kind of go in on all the uh, on all the other teams, kind of uh, one by one. So we've got Bournemouth, West Ham, Watford, and Brighton. They're all kind of basically, I think, at this point, kind of vying for that spot at 18th. Kind of out out of those teams, who do you think now is the most realistic will to kind of take up that spot? I know. Look, if you're looking at the table now, Villa are actually level on points with Bournemouth, but Bournemouth have a game in hand, as do West Ham, as do Brighton. I think Brighton have came back the strongest and the best so far. They got a good draw against Leicester. They got a good win against Arsenal. Who I don't think anyone seeing them coming back really would have predicted that. No, like I saw Brighton on the opening day of the season against Watford and they were really impressive, like much more impressive than anybody thought they were going to be. And they've been up and down. I think they went on a really bad run. I think they started off very well, went on a really bad run, but came back and started quite strongly um, and have done quite well. Uh, I think they've almost played above themselves this season. Um, I, I, th- I thought they would have been closer to the drop zone when you consider the teams that are below them. Um, Bournemouth, I'm still waiting for them to kick on. I look at their squad and some of the players they have there. um, They've always been a very good uh, team when it comes to how Eddie Howe has organised them. And I just wonder again, is is that becoming a little bit stale there with Eddie? Um, Eddie and Jason have been the kind of managerial pair there now for a good good few years and have done such a superb job at a tiny club. but I think that might be, unfortunately, the time for them. I think Watford have too many players in the squad. They sh- they seem to continually shoot themselves in the foot, Watford, at times. Um, going into the season, there was hopes they would maybe be top 10. They made some investments and it hasn't happened. Um, I know with the previous manager, there was a few things that maybe weren't done in pre-season that players weren't too happy about. Um, some players saying they were coasting along a little bit. So I think Watford will just have enough. And West Ham, again, when you look at what's happened to West Ham over the past five years or so, it's just been, you know, we, we, Pellegrini was meant to bring in this new era of, of players. And again, some of the players they have in their books, you just kind of go, how is a team like this down struggling? Um, again, the, the reason with West Ham is they can't score goals. They brought in Sebastian Haller, who has just not worked. Looks every inch a top-class centre-forward, a world-beater, and yes, can't seem to pull a performance together. Has zero confidence. I think he's still injured at the moment. And West Ham are struggling to play somebody like Mikel Antonio up front, who is not an out-and-out striker. He can play off a front man. He can be kind of like a number 10. He's creative in his own way, and he's a workhorse who put in a shift. But they're really struggling for goals, which, you know, and then the rest of the team are just, again, switching off. There's too many mistakes from some of these teams at times. Shoot themselves in the foot. But I think if we're going to go bottom three, I'm going Norwich. Uh, I'm going Aston Villa. And sad to say, because every time I've been to the club, they're so, uh, such a wonderful town. If you get the chance to go to Bournemouth in the UK, it's gorgeous. But I think, unfortunately, it could be Bournemouth this year. That was kind of the, the, the bottom three that I actually predicted just before the, the break was coming back. But, Paul, um, of the teams that are still pretty much there, because uh, I'm not really including Villa anymore in that, but to get that 18th spot, what are your thoughts? You've got West Ham, Brighton, Watford, uh, Bournemouth there. How, what are your thoughts on those clubs at the moment and kind of how they've been form-wise? Yeah, well, I think Brighton have surprised us all, particularly myself. We went one and up against them and then... Uh, let it slip last minute. Deserved to lose as well after the whole Mope Leno situation, which the Arsenal players didn't react too well to. Um, they've looked good, Brighton. I they sh- probably should have beat Leicester as well. So that would have been six points out of games. They probably would have expected to get none. Uh, I think Brighton are safe. Uh, Watford, you're just kind of waiting for Deeney to drag the rest of them out of it. It's not happening at the minute, but I think it will come. Um, West Ham. 
I mean, there's there's a serious problem there, and there has been since they moved into that new stadium. They had a great season before that, and the last season at Upton Park, and just haven't replicated that. They're just they're just lacking something. They've they've too many of the same player creative, but they only want to play the odd time. And Haller hasn't really worked out, like Will said. Uh, Bournemouth, I. I've seen them a couple of times. I watched them against Wolves last Wednesday. Nothing going forward. They're kind of just waiting to be beaten a lot of the time. They have a big game tomorrow against Newcastle at home, which you think if they can win that, that might spur them on. But can you really see them winning it? And then Villa have just looked looked very poor. Nothing going on from there. I think Villa and Bournemouth will take 19 and 18. Okay, and Gary, lastly, uh, yourself, just basically your thoughts on, on the clubs at the moment down the relegation zone and who you kind of think will uh, ultimately go down. Um, yeah, I do think um, Norwich and Villa are dead, dead certain now at this stage. There's no, there's no, there's no doubt about that. The Villa might get lucky, but uh, I doubt it. I did call Bournemouth. I called Bournemouth before this restart um, happened, but then they ended up getting that draw against Leicester and that win against Arsenal, which was unexpected. Um, no, I don't like Bournemouth. Every time I watch them, they they really bore me. And um, I think I've just been unlucky. I've just been I've been unlucky every game I watch them. They You're really bore them me. in the wrong season. I think so. I don't know what's going on, but every time I watch them, I just I just don't like. Um, uh, Bournemouth, or, 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 or to be honest, I don't like Brighton either. They're the same. Um, every time I watch them, they've bored, uh, they've uh, they've bored me. So I think that it will be. I did call Brighton, but I'm going to say Bournemouth only because of the results that Brighton have got over the last or the first two games in, in the after the restart because they were huge results for the massive. Um, and if they get another win, just one more win out of the remaining games, 36 mm-hmm. points should be enough to to keep them up with all the other teams around them. Um, West Ham very disappointing, but I think they have enough. Um, like we were saying, they have a huge squad there, and it all it takes really is one two nil or one three nil win for those players just to kick on in one game and be enough for them. Um, looking at Watford there as well, they've been really disappointing, and I thought they'd be they'd be grand after the restart because they had a um, a good run of form before um, the lockdown, but they've been disappointing as well. But I do think they they have enough just to stay up, and I think like Paul said, they're just waiting for Dini to score those goals, and I think he he has that in him, and he will score that, and they will get a, a result. Uh, here and there so i do feel it's going to be norwich aston villa and bournemouth although it's kind of a toss-up still between brighton and bournemouth for me because i do feel that brighton and bournemouth are kind of similar in the fact that there's just every time i watch them they've been boring so any of those two b's go down grant sorry lads oh i think the main thing with brighton is we want to see the irish lads doing well now come the end of the season aaron connelly's came back done well last week uh won a penalty and everything for brighton but um and Shane Duffy coming in as well. I think he came in from injury and he was playing. So it's great to see him back. And I think that's more of the focus now is just kind of making sure our Irish players stay up with Darren Randolph as well. Um, I think last time we were speaking, we were fearful that he would be going down to the championship too. But uh, just leaving it at that then, I, 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 I'd probably go with uh, the bottom three, Bournemouth, Villa and Norwich, as I actually had predicted from the, from the get-go. So... I'm going to stick with them anyway. Uh, as far as anything else goes, I suppose stay up to date on our channel. The League of Ireland is back on the 31st of July and it's been a long time coming. So I did a little reaction video on that, which is up on the channel now, which you can check out. Uh, huge thanks to lads for coming on. So, uh, if you like this video, drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to follow the lads. As you'll see, their social media underneath their names there. As you can see, Paul Tierney there at Tierney1723 and on Twitter at 17, at Tierney1732. And then, of course, we've got Gary Curran. <laughs> we had to finish with that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts regarding the race for Europe and who, who you think is going to finish in what positions in the comments. And we'll speak to you guys soon.